paint drip splatters and runs, revealing a series of images. A woman playing violin, then in a bright pink costume, then in a blind skier penny atop a mountain. The drip finally lands, revealing text in print and braille. Unsightly Opinions. Hi, welcome to Unsightly Opinions. My name is Tamara. Today, we are going to be reviewing my brand new custom wheelchair. Many of you watching may be wondering, Tamara, you're blind. Why do you need a wheelchair? We're going to get into that. And then we're going to talk about my journey to get a wheelchair, why I've chosen this chair, and all of the bells and whistles I have put on this chair to make it accessible for me, both with mobility issues and blindness. Without further ado, let's dive in. So why do I need a wheelchair? The long and short answer is I have several health conditions that mean that my legs aren't really reliable. I have a connective tissue disorder, which means my joints dislocate frequently. I have arthritis, nerve damage in my feet, and oftentimes I can pass out without warning. I have injured myself on many occasions. I have broken bones. I have gotten concussions. It's not safe for me to be on my feet for long periods of time. Can I still walk? Absolutely. But this is a tool that's going to help me stay safe. It was a very difficult decision coming to the realization that I needed a wheelchair because as a blind person, it adds a lot of complications. I lose a lot of my tactile feedback that I get from my feet. I can't visually orient, so I often drift left or right, even when I think I'm going straight. How do you use a white cane? How do you navigate safely? How do you use a guide dog? It brings up a lot of questions on how do you self-propel a wheelchair and use a cane at the same time? How do I maintain my independence? And that was very difficult because I felt like for the first time in a long time, I was back at square one. I had lost something and I wanted it back. The wheelchair felt like a defeat, like I had somehow failed, even though that was not the case. I've been trying for years and I realistically should have been using a wheelchair a long time ago. If you saw my health update video a few months ago, you know that I really struggled with it, but now that I have it, it's a very different story. I'm still learning, I'm still frustrated a lot of the time, but it is giving me independence back. It's not taking it away the way I thought it would. When I started this journey, I knew nothing about wheelchairs. I thought that we wheelchairs were one size fits all, I could order something off of Amazon and it was going to suit my needs. I didn't realize that there were 1,012 different types of chairs. I didn't realize that there were a lot of features you could change on wheelchairs. I thought all I needed was a transport chair. Thankfully, I was able to connect with a really experienced wheelchair occupational therapist who put me through the paces. We tried more than eight chairs before we came to this chair and a lot of trial and error to figure out what I liked, what I didn't like it took more than two years. We realized early on I was going to need something that was versatile. We had many discussions about what my needs were in the chair. I needed to feel safe and I needed to be able to go out into the community. We talked about the pros and cons of power chairs. I very early on rejected the idea of a full power chair. One, this is my first wheelchair and I felt like going straight into a power chair was jumping in at the deep end. I'd never driven anything with a joystick before. I didn't want to hurt myself. So I wanted to go with a manual chair because power chairs, they are very difficult to transport and I don't have the budget to buy a specialized vehicle to take it places. I also don't want to have to use accessible transport every time I leave my house. I fly a lot and I need to be able to take my chair with me. A very heavy, very expensive power chair is more likely to be broken by the airline because they don't know how to use it. Many power chair batteries can't go on airplanes because there are our limitations, at least where I live. So because I needed something that was going to work with my life, that was going to be very mobile, that was going to be able to take me across the country and across the world, I didn't want something that was heavy and cumbersome. I wanted something that was really streamlined and light and easy because the heavier it got, the harder it was for me. Because I have unstable joints, something that's really difficult to push is going to injure me more than walking on my legs. So we settled on a super light chair. This one was the cheapest of some very expensive options and I will be telling you what this chair cost at the end. I ended up settling on a Kai Mobility Rogue. I chose this chair for a number of reasons. There were several features that weren't available on lower end chairs that I really wanted. The first was the frame itself. I wanted an aggressive seat dump. So that's the angle at which you sit in the chair. Many chairs are flat across and I wanted to 
be tipped down into the chair so I felt more secure. I think I settled on a three inch dump into the back of the chair, which is quite a lot. And a lot of lower end chairs couldn't do that. The second thing is I wanted a really aggressive front angle. So that's the part where your foot plate sits. I didn't want that sticking out into space. I wanted as tight of a turning radius as humanly possible. So this is a 90 degree front end. The third thing I decided is I'm not very experienced. A lot of experienced wheelchair users want small casters so they can hop up on curbs really easily. I am not that. So I settled on the largest casters, which are the front wheels, the little wheels on the front that I could possibly get because I wanted to go over bumps smoothly. I'm not going to see bumps coming. So I need my wheelchair to be able to go over that easily without needing to hop up on my back wheels or tip over to get over them. Next, we really wanted to find something that was going to smooth the ride. I didn't realize before I got in a chair the first time how rough sidewalks can be. I was in a lot of pain sitting in my chair because of just how bumpy things were going over pavement. So we added this special feature on the front called frog legs, which are like little shock absorbers. They have a I think it's rubber bit that can help compress the weight when the front wheels are going over bumps. And that made it a lot safer. I also added wheelchair tie downs. So there's loops in the front and back so I can safely attach myself when I'm on public transport. I decided that I wanted fold down handles because I didn't want people coming up to me and pushing me around. I am visibly disabled at this point, And if somebody comes and touches me, I'm going to be completely disoriented. Oriented. So it was really important that when I wanted somebody to push me, I could have handles available to them. But when I wanted to be independent, when I didn't want to be bothered, I didn't want my handles easily accessible for somebody to grab. I'm really glad my OT suggested that because it has been an issue when I've gone out. There are two main types of chair frames. You can get a folding frame, which kind of smushes together, brings the two halves together. and you can get rigid frame. I was encouraged to get a rigid frame chair, which has a fold down back because I was told it was going to give me a slightly better ride. It was going to be more durable and need less maintenance. I'm still not experienced enough with chairs to know if that was the right decision, but anything that's more durable, anything that's going to give me an easier ride, that's going to be less effort to move was the right decision to make. I wanted a flip up foot plate, flips up at the back so I can come into my chair, sit down and then put the foot plate down. I don't have to worry about standing far away from my chair and falling into my chair. I can get nice and close, which again makes it safer. We added this cover. So when we're going through narrow areas, patients can hop up here. It has a grate on it. She wasn't super fond of that. So we just added this, I think it's a yoga mat that we cut into pieces and affixed to the top of the foot plate to make it a little safer for her. And she doesn't seem to mind it at all anymore. I have clothing guards because your lady likes her skirts and I didn't want things getting caught in the wheels, namely my fingers. We also went for very expensive wheels and I have two sets of rooms, one for winter one for summer. These are, I believe, black anodized hand rims. They are further away from the tire because when I grip the chair, I don't have finger strength at the tips of my fingers. I have to grip with my palm. So that gives me a little extra space when I am moving around manually to be able to grip the way that's most comfortable for me and not get my fingers anywhere near the spokes. My summer tires are Schwabi Marathon Plus. They're very high-end bike tires. They are air tires, again, to give me a smoother ride. And I have the Spinergy LX rims, which look really cool. They're supposed to be really durable. They're not supposed to need to be replaced ever. I should never have to deal with my spokes. And they're super, super, super light. Again, trying to make moving in the chair easier because every single ounce you add to the chair makes it harder to move. My backrest is a Matrix E2 Elite. I wanted this one for support. It's got curve to it. It's a tall backrest. and. And it comes around the sides of me so that when I'm going over bumps, I'm not unstable in my chest. It's going to help keep me in the chair. It's going to help keep me upright. And it's going to make going over bumps a little easier given my joint instability. 
My one qualm with this is I honestly wish the curve came around even more than it does, but that's something for the next chair. My cushion is a Geomatrix. It's a really interesting cushion, kind of heavy, which I wouldn't have initially gone for, but it is the comfiest cushion I have ever sat on. And for the price tag, it better be. I'll open it up and show you. It's got an outer case that's waterproof, which is really nice and you can wash that. And then an inner waterproof layer, just as a secondary backup to keep it extra clean. And then inside you find this really cool gel matrix. It feels really fun to play with, but it's really nice to sit on because it really hugs you, essentially brings you in and keeps you there, but it also cushions really well. It's got a really hard foam layer at the bottom, a soft, almost memory foam layer on top of that, and then this gel on top. At the bottom of all of that, I have a steel plate at the bottom that is a rigidizer, again, to help keep my posture in the chair. The cushion has a carrying handle, so when you pull it off the chair, it's easy to transport, to put in your car. I find it difficult to lift above my head. And it attaches to the bottom, like most wheelchair cushions, with Velcro. As you can see, the base chair here has just this piece of fabric that's intended to keep the cushion on. And over time, that fabric is going to sink. So again, that metal plate that I have in the bottom of my cushion is going to help prevent that and keep my wheelchair working a little bit longer. I got swing away arms, which remove very easily. They just pop out or I could swing them sideways, which means if I had to get out of my chair sideways, that makes it very easy. And because it was what was going to work best with my power assist, which we're going to talk about now. A power assist on a wheelchair is designed to either partially or fully take over what someone would need to do to propel themselves manually. Because I am blind, we realized when I was out independently, I was not going to be able to self-propel and use any other mobility aid. I was not going to be able to push myself with both hands and use a cane. Push one arm, push the other arm, and switch my cane back and forth. That wasn't going to be safe. We looked at a number of different options. One arm drive chairs where you push with only one arm. That didn't work really well because I kept dislocating my shoulder and wrist, so we decided that I would need a power assist. This is the most important part of the chair. This is the part of the chair that makes me independent. There are many types of power assists. Some hook onto the front buggy style and you drive them almost like a scooter or a bike. They give you a, th a third wheel on the front. Some hook on the back and give you a third wheel where you tap and they just, once you're going, they keep you going. But this one is special because it essentially turns my manual wheelchair into a power chair. I have a joystick that is affixed to the front. I have it positioned exactly where I want it for comfort, and I can drive my wheelchair anywhere I want using this joystick. I can turn this chair with 15 kilos of extra weight into something that can move independently. This is a magical solution for somebody who needs to use a mobility aid and propel themselves because I can turn it on and I can move and I have one arm free to do whatever I need to. The other options weren't going to work because reaching forward and trying to use a dog or having a third wheel that was going to move independently wasn't safe. I needed something with a joystick that I could immediately turn on and off just like a power chair, but not a power chair. We needed to be able to still move it. So there were two options on the market for me. One was the Albert eFix. It's essentially two wheels that come with a joystick that propel your chair. The wheels are each 50 pounds. I could be mistaken on that. Editing Tamara here, I was definitely wrong. It's 17 pounds per wheel and 42 pounds for the entire unit. And it's very difficult to self-propel because of how heavy the wheels are. The other option is this. This is a to-do drive. I was quoted $11,000 for the Albert eFix and $9,000 for the to-do. I thought I was going to have to get a second mortgage to get this device. This device is very simple. All it does is it has one motor for each wheel that engages with the tire and using sandpaper, it turns the wheel. It has a lithium ion battery on the back and the joystick. I would like somebody to explain to me why that should cost $9,000. It shouldn't. And now for the true cost to regain a piece of my independence. Remember, this chair has two sets of tires, two sets of rims, one backrest, one cushion, and one smart drive. The base chair, which is essentially just the frame, cost me $6,142 Canadian, $4,483 for my American friends, $4,012 for my UK friends, and $4,564 for my European Union friends. The to-do ran me $4,500 Canadian, 
even with a manufacturer discount. One set of Spinergy LX rims plus the tires ran me $1,450 for my winter set and $1,020 for my summer set, which I got on eBay. My Matrix Elite backrest plus wedge cost me $596 Canadian. My Geomatrix hybrid cushion cost me $1,022 Canadian. And for those of you who are keeping track, the grand total, $14,730 Canadian. After grants and assistance, I paid $6,930 out of pocket. That is an astronomical amount of money. That's my wheelchair. I have been desperately searching for other blind YouTubers, other blind people who use chairs, and I haven't come across any. Here's the part of the video where I'm going to ask for your help. I know that statistically, almost 10% of blind individuals use wheelchairs. Where are you? I need to talk to you. I need advice. I need help. I know there have to be young people like me who use wheelchairs because I am new to this and if there's someone that can help me figure out some of the particulars that mean that I don't have to spend years doing trial and error, it would be amazing. I have done deep dives online, I have gone into all of the Facebook groups, and all I've been told is that people get pushed around, and I know that's not accurate. I make YouTube videos to help people live their best blind life, to try and change what it means to be blind, to show how you can be independent. But right now, I'm not fully independent, and I would like to be. So if you could help put me in touch with some folks, that would be amazing. So now I'll finish with a few clips of me using the chair. Oh, any direction you want for as long as you want. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.